Hi guys, welcome to Val's Kitchen Eats and today I want to share this delicious recipe with you. Today we're going to be making oven roasted prime rib burgers with matchstick french fries. So let's just get into it. Alright guys, so for this recipe, these are the ingredients that you will be using. This is not Burger King, but you can still have it your way. You can choose any ingredient you might like or dislike. So it's totally up to you. I just gotta mention one thing for this video, for the video purposes, I will be using this prime rib. You don't have to. The only thing I must say is if you are gonna buy the pre ground stuff, you're gonna have to cook the burgers all the way through. You don't wanna take a chance because you don't know how long they've been sitting in a package. You won't be able to enjoy that medium. You will have to cook it well done. In my case, I got this stuff and I'm gonna be chopping it here with you guys just in a few minutes and we'll go from there. All right, guys, so let's begin. We're gonna start with our beautiful black, uncured, thick cut bacon. This bacon is delicious. You don't have to get the black bacon, but I would suggest you guys get thick cut bacon. All right, so I'm gonna pop this in the oven at 350 degrees and I'm gonna let it cook and keep an eye on it. I will rotate the bacon as needed. For now, what I'm gonna do, so we will be making a candied bacon. So I got a little brown sugar here. I'm gonna put a little bit of water, not much, all right? And a little more. We make kind of a, like a sugar slurry that we're gonna brush onto our bacon once it's 80% cooked. Okay, so let that sit right here. All right, guys, so it's time to work on our beautiful piece of meat. All right, set our cutting board up. So just gonna mention one thing that I had this meat in the freezer for about 15, 20 minutes. So it's nice and chill while we're working with it. All right, so I'm gonna dice it up, small chunks. Just like that. You guys can choose any beef you choose to turn into your burgers as long as I would say the fat and meat content is about 80 20 20 percent fat 80 percent meat for that nice juicy burger all right guys so let's start chopping our meat up so there's three ways that you can do it is if you have a food processor like this you put just so you can handle you're gonna do it in batches Second way is to do it, if I did not have a food processor, if you would have a standard food grinder, you would choose your second course and chop it through that. Or the third choice, if you don't have neither, you take your sharp knife and just start cutting it into small chunks like that, and then smaller and smaller, and then kind of chop it up until you have that hamburger consistency that you will be looking for. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna pulse it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm gonna check on it. Beautiful, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, all right. Good time to season as well. Okay, a, a good amount of black pepper in there. And you wanna season at this stage when the meat is getting chopped up and mixed in. You don't wanna do it later because at a later point you'll be working with your warm hands and kind of melting the fats and stuff like that. You wanna do it right now. This is a perfect timing. All right, let's check. Perfect. Beautiful. Okay, so. This is the consistency that you're looking for. All right, our bacon's been in the oven for 12 minutes. Let's check. Okay, it's, I would say, 80% done. Time for the step. So I got my brown sugar and water mixture right here. And I'm gonna kind of just brush it on onto our bacon. Okay. And at this point, you wanna check on it about every minute and flip it over and do the other side with the brown sugar as well. All right, it's been about a minute and time to take our bacon out. And 
we're gonna flip it over before we do that we'll just brush the side again one more time I can already see the caramelization that's happening the sugar is sticking to the bacon right. goes back into the oven to finish the cooking process okay time to check on the bacon oh, beautiful all right that's what we're looking for and once it sits for a little while it's gonna harden up the sugars will kind of tighten up and it'll be nice and crispy crunchy sweet bacon so let's just set that aside and we are gonna start working on our matchsticks french fries. All right, the next thing is working on our beautiful Idaho potatoes, turning them into matchsticks. So for that process, you will need this mandolin, Japanese, $20. And the potatoes are pre-washed. And what I'm gonna do is lengthwise, I'm gonna just start cutting them, just like that. So you're looking for that matchstick consistency all right just like that all right guys so i'm done slicing the potatoes this is what you're looking for i leave the skins on they look a little nicer when they're cooked so i gotta mention once you get this sliced you gotta get it into cold water as soon as possible because the potatoes are sliced pretty thin and they will oxidize on you fairly quickly and if you don't get into your cold water, what's gonna happen? They're gonna turn that uh, unpleasant dark color. So what I'm doing here, I'm just gonna wash the starch out. Like that. See, the whole that is starch. That's potato starch. All right, guys, so I had our burger meat in the freezer so it stays nice and chilled. And before we start shaping and weighing our burgers, I wanna talk about this part. I got myself a wire rack. I got my favorite silicone mat and a sheet pan. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some salt, put salt right over here, kinda of spread it out. The reason for this is when your burgers will be cooking on this rack, the fat will be dripping onto your silicone mat and you'll prevent it from burning in the oven. You'll eliminate all that smoke. All right, so let's shape our burgers. I'm gonna make these eight ounce burgers. So I'm gonna kind of eyeball it and put on my scale. All right, let's see, just a little more. Right there. And I got this tool here, I bought it on Amazon. To shape my burgers right here you can definitely do it by hand kind of don't squeeze it too hard at this point kind of squeeze it in between and then work it around but I got one of these and they work really really well put it right in there with some pressure all right perfect nice thick burger so what I'm gonna do with my finger I'm gonna make this indentation right here in the middle the reason for that when they're gonna be cooking in that hot oven the proteins they're gonna try to pull together and if I don't make this hole it's gonna give it that bulky look it's not gonna look like a burger it's gonna be like a similar to a meatball or something so by putting this little hole that prevents that they're gonna stay this nice beautiful burger shape all right guys so I had a little piece of beef left over all right this ground beef right here so what i'm going to do is i just want to show you an example i'll shape it into a disc just a burger like that and this one will place right here on the edge this one's not going to have this little hole and we'll see how it comes out okay so i season my burgers one more time just all over with salt and pepper and i put a good amount of pepper beef can really handle a good amount of pepper you will not hurt it so all right guys so it's time to get the burgers into the oven at a 12 minute mark I'm gonna start keeping a closer eye on them if you want the medium rare they will be anywhere from 125 to 135 
If you want them medium, at 140. And if you are gonna want them well done, you're looking at 150, 160. Okay, they go in. So let's keep an eye on them. Okay, so while our burgers are in the oven, it's perfect timing to get everything set up. So we're just gonna cut some onion rings. This is a beautiful heirloom tomato. All right, so for our french fries, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this thyme, just kind of, you guys can chop it or kind of just pull it off the stems like that. And we're gonna toss our french fries right in there. I'm gonna add a little garlic, I'm not going to, but you know, you can add uh, maybe some truffle oil to these fries, make them more fun, Parmesan cheese, all right, so that's good. A little bit of rosemary. Check these out. For parsley, I don't want to use the stems, so I'm just going to pick, get the leaves off. The stems you guys can save for something else, maybe making a stock. All right, so our prep for our french fries is ready, right here in this bowl. Get rid of this. Time to toast our beautiful brioche buns. All right guys, so I got my beautiful brioche buns. I'm gonna brush them with a little bit of butter, like that. Toast them. and we got about two minutes before we check on our burgers okay the timer about to go off on our burgers let's check all right so they're not done yet let's give it a little more time we'll give it another four minutes all right, so it's been 17 minutes. Let's check on our burgers. Oh. Let's check them out. All right, thermometer. Right in the middle. If you guys can see how the salt kind of picked up all the fat on the bottom, so this is how I like my burger. 137, 138, between 135, 140, excellent. So I'm gonna pull my burger off. I'm gonna put, pull the cameraman's burger off, basically all of them. Here, this is an example that I was talking about. If you guys don't make that little hole, you know, your burger will look like a little meatball. You know, it puffs up. And this, if it cooks longer, it'll puff up even more. So that's not what we're looking for. So I'm gonna pull all the burgers off because they're all at medium, maybe a little over, once they carry over, that's fine. And I'm gonna leave one for my four-year-old because I don't think he's gonna wanna eat a medium burger. We'll cook his well done. So I'm just gonna give it another maybe four minutes, three, four minutes, and I'll check on it. All right, time to check on Nicholas's well done burger. Let's see. Oh yes, it's nice and firm, it's cooked. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm putting Nicholas's burger here, and we're gonna put, we'll make three burgers for now. All right, we'll do it this way. Nicholas is gonna want American cheese. Dennis is gonna want American. And I want some Swiss. Goes back in the oven just for a few minutes to melt the cheese. Okay, while we're doing that, we're gonna cook our french fries. Okay. Do small batches at a time. Okay. Don't overcrowd your fire, because the oil will flow over. While that's cooking, it takes about a minute or two. You wanna constantly stir those fries. But while you're doing that, let's start working on our setup for our burgers. Okay, put a little 
mayo, ketchup, okay. I'm having mine with mushrooms, so I'll not be using any ketchup. All right, so the french fries are ready to come out. Okay. Get them all out so they're not burning. Okay. And we're ready for our second batch. Right here. Okay. All right, so Nicholas is gonna have his plain Dennis likes lettuce, tomato, onion. So we'll put some red onion. It's nice and sweet, beautiful tomato. Let's season the tomato. And beautiful green lettuce. So here's a setup. I have my mushroom ready. I think everyone's gonna want these beautiful crispy bacon on their burgers. So I'll take one as well, why not? Okay. All right, let's check on the cheese. Beautiful, nice, melted. This one, the first one is Nicholas, Dennis, and myself. Okay. Come on, I got these beautiful creamy mushrooms that I will be making in a different video. Just like that. Alright guys, so make sure french fries always need some salt and pepper. Okay. Just toss them in those beautiful herbs. Okay. Alright, I'm gonna tray it up. Right here. It wouldn't be a burger and fries without a good milkshake, right? So we're gonna make some milkshakes. So I got one frozen banana, I got some milk in there, and I'm putting this Butterfinger creamy ice cream. guys so this video was a lot of fun to make yeah this video is a lot of fun yes he was he was the main helper here nicholas he helped us out a lot so guys come on let's let's begin what do you want to go first french fries or burger uh, both yeah put both on this plate yeah i want that one right there you got it i don't want a tomato what is you don't have a tomato. Come on, Nicholas. Get it. Pick your burger up like this. Come on. Mm. Oh my God. Beautiful. So juicy. I mean, what do you have to say? What do you think? Nicholas, what do you think? This Nicholas, bite into good. it. You okay. eating it? So how do you like it? Because it's yummy. It's yummy? Delicious. All the flavors. Good ingredients. Let me this just... burger came out really, really good. I'll definitely be making it again and again. Can, it is delicious. It's worth spending a little extra time and love into the recipe. And when it comes out so good, it's just so satisfying. 
Nicholas, how do you like your milkshake? It's yummy. It's yummy? All right. Yeah, help yourself. Grab it, grab it. Come on. You can do it. It's super hard. Yeah. Mmm. Okay, that too. Yeah. Whichever way works for you, eat it. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us for this delicious recipe. And uh, we had a lot of fun in the kitchen today. And um, it looks like everyone's enjoying it now. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the bell notification for more to come. Please.